What's up guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be cambering my Genesis. But before this video starts, this is actually the next day compared to the rest of the clips of this video. Well, the next couple of clips of this video, I should say. Because I made a mistake, and I realized that while I was doing the install yesterday. So this is a new intro, the intro I shot yesterday, I'm not even going to put it in the video. So what I have in the box here is the rear pro camber arms and I was supposed to get the rear pro toe arms or the, the upper arms as they call them but what I bought instead for the rear was the rear toe rods so I only had the camber arms and the toe rods and what you do need is camber arms and the toe arms I didn't have the toe arms so, recording that video, I'm like, I don't know what to do, let me stop right here. And I didn't even say it, these are all ISR parts, I'm sorry. All my parts here are all ISR performance. From Generacer.com, like normal, 95% of my stuff I get is from Generacer. But yeah, long story short, this morning I ordered toe, upper toe arms for the rear, so as of right now, in this intro, I do have just the camber arms in the rear right now. I have no toe arm in whatsoever. The stock one is taken out. And in the front, in the box, I have front and lower control arms for the fronts. But the next clip you guys are going to see is from yesterday of doing the install on the camber arms and taking out the stock toe arms. And the toe rods that I bought by accident, I'm going to be sending them back or doing something with them. I'm not going to be putting them in my car. That's just what I want to do guys. Let's get right into this. Also guys, one more thing before the install starts. The next couple of clips, when we're taking out the rear toe arm in the back, I keep calling it a toe rod. I don't know what was going on in my head. So every time I call the upper toe arm in the rear a toe rod, it's not. It's a toe arm. Okay guys? And also, to help you guys remember that, every time I say the word toe rod, I'm going to throw toe arm across the screen or something like that. But, sorry for the mistake guys, we're gonna get right into this. And check it out, let's Here. go. Send it. All right guys, so underneath the car, we got a little oil pump jacks and we got the back wheels off already. So first we're gonna hit the rear tow rod, which is this piece here from here with the lines on it going all the way to the back here. But the problem is we're seeing already is it's very tight. If the camera wants to get down there, there we go. So that's the bolt the bolt end right there. And on the other end here, which you can just about see is the nut. I'm hoping we're gonna be able to get the bolt off without having to hold the nut side. But if we do have to hold the nut side, we're probably gonna have to use like a pair of vice grips or something like that because we are unable to get any type of wrench or impact gun or anything like that back there but we're gonna try and get this tow rod out first and then we're gonna hit the camber arm afterwards and the bolt side is a 17 millimeter i can't tell you what size the nut is because i can't get any tool on there but if anything it would either be a 17 as well or it would be a 16 but the bolt side for sure is a 17 mil all right guys what you guys need first is someone who can bench 315 yeah, buddy. And then, um, hopefully the strength to get out this bolt. Because we can't fit any type of air gun in here either. No air gun, no impact gun, nothing. So, just some tools. And a kid who can bench 315. So we are making, we air, we are making small progress on the bolt here. And we're having Mr. 315 just, um, break it enough. And then hopefully once it's loose enough, we can, um, just throw a ratchet on there and spin that John right off. She's coming, boys. Slow and steady. We, I don't know if it's considered a luck or it's supposed to happen, but the nut on the bolt end is not spinning, so we're doing all right. All right, guys, so the back bolt is out. Wasn't that hard. The nut did stay tacked in. It didn't move whatsoever. Now you hop over to the front of the tow rod. This is a 17 mil, same as the back. We're gonna get this John right off and we'll get back to you guys. 
Now both the bolts are out of the tow rod. But as you can see, the tow rod's still in place, but it's just kind of just sitting there. But now what we're gonna do is jump to the camber arm. The bolt on the front of the camber arm, I hope that's focusing right here. That's a 19 mil. And on the other side of it, looks like it's just going to the back of the rotor. So this right here is a 19 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna take that right off. And then the rotor should be able to pull forwards a little bit. At least I, I would assume so. And then we're gonna take out the toe arm when it's pulled forward. I'm trying to get some some go. good footage for the boys. I can't see what I'm doing. Just tap that gun. I'm trying to wait for it to focus. Focus. Don't be the Mark III. It's not doing. It's not working. We need a third camera, man. Yeah, go for it. There you go. So that came off pretty easily. You got a monster washer on there. That's to, that's the front of the camber arm. Now this guy here. Now we have to have a nut and bolt in the back hand. Now this pulls forward a little bit, but now we're gonna hit the bolt in the back of the camber arm. I'm assuming that's a 19 as well. Yeah, let me see. Here. Look at that. Barber's opened back up. This kid got a fresh cut. No hair baby. No hair gang. It's is it a 19? No, nah, it's small. It's smaller? All right, guys, update. The back is not a 19. Try 17. That's an 18. It's an 18. Yeah. All right, boys. Time out. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. Let's see. 18. Is it an 18? That's what I'm talking about. All right, I can't see where he is, but it's the back of the camber on. And it is an 18. Is that the bolt side? Yes. Yeah. There it looks like there's a nut right there. Look, hey, I actually got it. There's a nut right there. I'm gonna see if we can just spin out the bolt. Not even have to worry about the nut. But if the nut starts to spin, we're gonna have to throw a ratcheting wrench on that side. I'm assuming that's 17, but it looks small. we'll see, boys. We'll take a lot of this camber on. All right, guys, the rear bolt for the camber arm is out. It was a little bit tedious because we had to use 3 8 drive wrenches and breaker bars because it was a very tight fit to get back there. Like we couldn't fit any impacts or air guns or any type of power tool back there. So it was just the small guys had to come save the day. Everything is just in here just chilling. Camera arm should come right out. Well, there's the camera arm. Can I try and knock out the toe arm since we're there? Yeah, sure, might as well. Hold on. And the toe. See if we can take the toe out. Should I pull this forward or anything? I might have to take your, 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 your rotor part out first. Yeah, because like, you could need to take this part out first because this part is hitting the top. Alright, let me put the camera down. Alright, guys. We're back over here. We got this John fully maxed out. Is it either a full sun or a no sun? and we'll just see how this goes. Bushings are nice. I think the bushings on the stock camber arms are pretty shot from what I saw. But um, it's all your horsepower. Yeah, all my horsepower. All 250 of it. I can't really see what we're doing here, but um, oh God, that's a lot of candies. Holy, come here, brother. <laughs> here, come on. Check, check where the rotor is now compared to how deep it's gonna sit. You want me to put in the back part first? Yes, the back part's gonna go in first. So it should be loose at your end? Nice. Here you go. Hold that for me, sir. Hold on. I, I gotta get my hand out. It's like being a little bit. Damn, that's, dude, that's a lot of camber. That's what's up. That's what's up. Exactly. That's what's up, buddy. Stop. I, I downloaded the level app. I'm at negative five right now. Your, Can't, just natural. I want to aired out though, right? Yeah, aired out. And then the front was negative two, which that's what the top hat was. Did you get cameras for the front too? I just got lowers. Can't, can't really see what's going on here, but pretty much the same thing as taking it out, but now it's going back in with the new piece. Watch your head. Okay. Hot stuff. Ow, my head. Good? 
Yeah, let me get let me catch that nut. Catch that nut. Hey yo. Hey, who said that? Oh. Who's under here? Okay. Good day, Y Gen. Yo, Y Gen graduated today. <laughs> Yeah, shout happy, out to, happy graduation. Yeah, shout out to Wide Gen graduation today. Yeah, my boy graduated high school. Wide Gen, you better be watching this. That's a fact, Wide Gen. <laughs> <laughs> it's now like the third day of this install, and my parts that I was supposed to order, but I just ordered yesterday or two days ago rather, they just came in. Gen Racer hooked it up again with like that one day delivery. Thank you guys again. So, this is the piece that I need for the rear. This is the rear toe arm or the upper arm I think they called it it's considered pro rear upper arm I don't know toe arm I don't know and what we're going to be doing is what I did in the rear was I maxed out the rear camber arm and from center to center on the camber arm in the rear it was three quarters of an inch smaller than the stock camber arm center to center. So, because that center to center on the aftermarket camber arm compared to the stock camber arm was three quarters of an inch difference, I'm gonna be making this center to center of these holes three quarters of an inch smaller than this one. And it, it makes sense to me because to get to three quarters of an inch smaller, you pretty much have to max it out like this. Like this is completely maxed out and my camera arms are in the rear are completely maxed out. So it kind of makes sense. It goes hand in hand with each other. But we already installed it on the driver's side, which took us like five minutes maybe at. Yeah. Like five minutes. And we're gonna throw the same thing in on the passenger side. And that should be it for the rear. And use your stock bolts, guys. Forgot to say that. It does not come with, F, with uh, different bolts. Use your stock ones. Before you put them back in, maybe clean them with uh, an emery brush or something like that. But uh, let's go. <laughs> You have that back bolt. No nut back here. You can still tack on. Correct. It's kind of hard to get back here and show you guys this, but um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Very easy compared to. I'm sorry. It's almost the exact same thing as the stock toe. But pretty much once that bolt is in in the back, you just line it up with the front right here, which is actually pretty close as well. Upper arm is now in. Bolt is in here. Can't. Not sure if I can grab it. Nice. Yeah. All right, that's in. Looks nice. All right, guys. So the back is pretty much done. Upper arm here. Camber arm here. Both of them are pretty much maxed out. You might have like one thread or two threads here, just because my alignment is pretty screwed up at the moment. So I think we did the driver side correctly. I can't make any promises just because the alignment is so out of whack already. But the lower control arm's on. But now we're gonna show you the same thing on this side as what we did to the driver's side. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna take off the back of the lower control arm first. Uh, we've I felt like this was the easiest thing to do to get these out. So we have to take this nut off from the bolt, and these are both 19 millimeter sockets. You want me to hold this end? Yeah. Are you trying to break that end? Yep. Go for it. Well, this can move down because it's... No, it's in the way no. again. Okay. So now, guys, once the bolt is out, I don't know if you guys could see it, but the front sway bar is in the way of taking out the bolt. Not surprised at this point. As you can see here, head of the bolt will not come out any further just because the sway bar is in the way. So there's two bolts right there. Uh, one. Number one. And two's on that Number two. Side. Those are 14 millimeter bolts. As soon as you drop that down, this sway bar should drop down and the bolt should come right out, guys. So once the sway bar is out, mine fully fell down because I also have the bolts out on the other side. So mine dropped down a lot, now it's just chilling there. So now we're able to pull out the bolt from the back lower. Now, pop to the front. 
As you guys can see, there's a cotter pin right there on the top of that nut. Just pull out that cotter pin. I'm gonna be honest, I destroyed it on the other side, but it doesn't matter because you're not putting it back in. So if you guys destroy it, whatever. If you guys take it out, like he just sent it, that was really good. I'm gonna go pro. for it. I'm a pro. And now that nut there holding the ball joint in, that is a 17 millimeter nut. So go ahead, pop that out, and we'll go back to you guys when we have when we use the ball joint separator. Alright guys, so the new tool of the day that we just bought is the ball joint separator. It worked very nicely on the other side. Yeah. And this is, I think it was like 25 bucks from um, Advanced Auto Parts. So pretty worth it. So this, the U part on the bottom, the claw goes into the ball joint. And then the top part goes onto the nut on the top of the ball joint. And we'll try to show you how that works. Yeah. So like Chris said, we have the U part on the bottom of the ball joint and then the flat part up top on the nut or the thread, whatever you still have. And in our case, the bottom, this bolt here on the ball joint separator is, you said 23 or 24? 24 mil. 24 mil. And then hopefully we could just tighten this ball joint, um, the bolt down here, and the ball joint separator will do its job. Update, guys. The lower is out. Ball joint. Absolute pain. If you don't use the proper tool, it's not going to work. Like when I worked on my friend's IS for the brakes, I used, I think, a one inch open ended wrench and kind of just pried it. But for some reason on the Genesis, it's not working. Even with the, comp the ball joint separator, the proper tool, it still gets the job done. But holy cow, is it. It's not fun. It's not easy. But and, and it's very scary. It's very scary. Yeah. It's, you're but just cranking it and cranking it and waiting for it to pop. This is the best tool you need. <laughs> if you don't have this, it's not coming off unless you're like an animal. Or you have a pro tip. If you guys take off ball joints your own way, please leave them in the comments. Or even better, send me a DM on Instagram because I want to see how you guys get these off. I've worked on three or four cars with ball joints. I hate ball joints, but this I like this tool. It's pretty good. What I have here is the same thread count as I have on that side. It's not going to give me probably any camber. At the moment, it's about the same size as the stock lower is. I'm not going to start dealing with the camera now because the alignment is really messed up as it is already. So I'm just going to get these into my car just even if it gives me no camera whatsoever. I just don't want to start dealing with the camera now and not be able to even drive the car to the alignment shop. So I'm just going to get them in my car just to get them in, not going to worry about any type of camera. And once I get to the alignment shop, I'll have them dial in all the camber and all that fun stuff. Oh, look at that. A little slight send. That's in. Now you just gotta put the nut on the back. Alright guys, my car is back on the floor. Everything is all tightened up, everything is nice. Besides my alignment. My alignment is far from nice. It's actually pretty sketchy. Um, I probably could have played around with the toe and all that stuff a little bit, but, um, I didn't really want to. So, hopefully I'm going to be able to drive it to the alignment shop, like the way it is now. Hopefully the alignment shop will be able to make it better than what it is now. Let me turn the camera around, and give you guys a look. So, right now, you guys can see how turned in my wheel is. My steering wheel is straight right now. That's the way this wheel is. And if you hop to this side, this wheel is turned in. So my wheels are kind of pigeon toed right now. They're going in towards each other. But um, yeah, I hope I'll be able to drive like I'm still aired up, guys. I'm not going to be able to air out in the front just because I'm going to smash my fender. And here in the rear, again, this is not aired out. I know, I'm probably going to need a bigger spacer on there. But I'm going to see if I can air out the rear for you guys at least. That's pretty damn close. That's, yo, that's our 18 PSI left. Yeah. Now the front and back, I, I can see myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
You're dumped. <laughs> Your mic. My line is so long. I wonder why, Chris. Alright guys, it's now like the following day I believe, or maybe the day after I got my alignment, and it looks good. It looks, it looks pretty valid. I was super scared driving to the alignment shop. The people at the alignment shop were surprised I actually drove there. Um, but yeah, I made it there alive. It was kind of sketchy, but um, yeah. So in the rear at the moment, let's see if I can turn the camera and give you guys a better angle. And keep in mind guys that this is aired out. This is negative 10 degrees. In the rear, when I'm aired up, at like my ride height. Hold on. Excuse me little buddy. Get off my wheel. Thank you. When I'm aired up, this is like negative 8.5, the, uh, the paper said. But once I air out, it does camber in even more so that's about negative 10 degrees and this is on a nine and a half inch wheel with a 25 mil spacer so I'm thinking about putting a bigger spacer on the back maybe a 35 or a 45 probably a 35 to be honest but um it looks pretty good and as for the front I don't have as much camber as I expected to but this is about negative three degrees of camber in the front. But the reason why I don't have as much camber in the front as I do in the rear, was because the rear I have the camber arms along with the toe arms. But in the front I only have the lower control arms. If I do want more camber in the front, I'm gonna have to buy the tension rods. Because at the moment, my stock tension rods are pretty much maxed out before they pop off the threads. So. It's a little sketch, but I have the front lowers on with the stock tension rods and all that stuff. But I'm probably going to make another video on installing the tension rods in the front because I do want more camber in the front because I kind of bought the lower control arms to get camber and I only have about negative three degrees. So I got to buy the tension rods and probably get another alignment, unfortunately. But otherwise, this looks pretty sick. And from like a distance, this thing looks awesome and it definitely did get lower as well just because now I'm so much more tucked in the rear but yeah guys so I'm, I think that's pretty much it for this video it's probably gonna be a little bit longer of a video but um, I tried getting as much information in this as possible for you guys but I will be making another video when I do the front lowers and new um, alignment I don't want to throw it in this video because I don't know when I'm going to be doing that but that should be it guys if you guys have any questions Make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I uh, will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.